But this is what my blood sugar looks like most days right now with my CGM. So ta-da, here it is. This is Carnivore MD's um, blood sugars from, I don't know what day this was. This is probably the, do you, oh, there it is, 512. So yeah. we're recording this podcast on May the 22nd, I believe. These are my blood sugars from the 12th of May. This is all sleeping. I get up in the morning. My blood sugar when I'm waking up is probably somewhere in here. It's probably 81 or 83 or maybe in the low to high 70s. I usually do a little bit of work and, um, and then I eat breakfast later in the morning. And you can see here's a spike. Now, most people would look at this and say, oh, you had a blood sugar spike. You shouldn't have eaten that honey. And you can see my breakfast is here. Steak, liver, egg yolks, and honey. This is what Carnivore MD eats in a day, you guys. You can watch my What I Ate in a Day video if you want to see. But this is what we mean area under the curve. So if you're watching this on YouTube, this will make sense. You can draw some sort of an imagined baseline here and you integrate all of the area here, right? This is not a really big area under the curve. It goes up, it comes down quickly, it peaks at 133. And you can't quite see, I can't trace on the computer here. This is about an hour that I'm back to baseline of under 80 milligrams or right about 80 milligrams per deciliter within one hour of eating, this has got to be more than 70 grams of carbohydrates from raw organic honey. This is a lot of carbohydrates. That's a lot, yeah. Yeah, this is, and this good, is the yeah. peak, right? Mm -hmm. So this may look like uh, an excursion, this may look like a bad thing, but in the moment we will show you guys what a disordered glucose curve looks and you'll see the difference, looks like and you'll see the difference. Then I go through my day, I might've had a workout here in the afternoon, a little bump, and then I have more honey in the evening at my dinner time. I like to eat uh, early in the day. People who know my routine will know that I eat two meals a day. I try and eat them within a six hour window and I try and eat dinner by three or 4 p.m. I probably had a little bit less honey in the evening as we'll talk about. I have observed a pattern where I am less uh, insulin sensitive, quote unquote, in the evening, meaning that if I eat an equivalent amount of carbohydrates in the evening and the, in the morning, I'll see a bigger glucose spike in the evening. So that's again, another thing I've learned. Now, this is my baseline. I want you guys to look at this. This is not much glycemic variability. The app for NutriSense will calculate the standard deviation. And looking at this week, what did we calculate the standard deviation for a day like this was? 11 or 12%? Yeah, about 11. 11%. Which is great. Yeah. We didn't go into this earlier in the podcast, but what's cool about this app with NutriSense, or I'm sure um, other companies may do the same thing as well. They'll give you a standard deviation, which is perhaps one of the more important numbers to indicate this level of glycemic variability. And we don't want this to be above 20. Most diabetics are above 30. And mine was 11. You can see there's not a whole lot of glycemic variability during the day. Some of these nighttime numbers are a little tricky. What we've decided is that sometimes I'm moving around in my sleep, causing things to go up and down a little bit. But these daytime numbers are pretty darn stable. You can see the spike here. Again, not much area under the curve at all. So let's compare this to someone that's disordered and I'll have you walk me through it. So which one should we use? Yeah, that second one here you can tell is, is very clearly disordered. Uh, so she had what, two eggs and a piece of toast and avocado. And so that's less than 70 grams of carbs for sure. It's probably 20 grams of carbs. And the glucose spikes to about what, 180? And yeah. then it takes about four hours to come back down to normal. So that's completely abnormal. I would not, it, that's insulin resistance in a graph, if you will. So that's not what we want to see at all. And you can also tell fasting glucose values are at about 112, 110. Yes. Um, also not looking so good. And then you can see this second response. So she ate something later in the evening and there's a small glucose increase at first. And then there's a larger one almost two hours after you eat. And I see this a lot in the evening, like you said, people do have less insulin sensitivity in the evening. Our insulin works on a circadian rhythm, just like our other hormones, just like melatonin. And so we have less insulin sensitivity in the evening and we're not secreting as much insulin. And so what happens a lot for people is that they'll eat meals at night. And when do people normally have sweets and treats and desserts at night? That's like actually the worst thing you can do. I'm not encouraging sweets ever, but if you're gonna do it, do it like in the morning when you first wake up. Honestly, don't do it at night. I see this over and over every single day is somebody will have carbohydrates, refined carbohydrates, sugar, 
in the evening and their glucose values overnight while they're sleeping stay 140, 150 all night long. So the whole time you are sleeping, it is in these really elevated diabetic levels because your body just doesn't process food that well late at night, especially if you're already showing signs of insulin resistance. So it's very important about that meal timing, especially refined carbohydrates, especially added sugars. So I really like to focus on that because a lot of people eat late. And if you are going to eat late, if your schedule can't control it at all, make that just, you know, protein, fat, don't consume your carbohydrates late at night if you are going to consume some. So that's a big rule of thumb.